safe working environment. In this section, it is a basic requirement of the ILO Occupational Safety and Health Convention, C-155, to provide and maintain workplaces, equipment, devices, and systems so that they remain safe. Consistent implementation of good housekeeping is an essential element of providing a safe place of work. A safe place of work includes cleanliness, workstations, and seating, windows, and transparent doors, and the provision and maintenance of safe means of access and egress. Safety signs are standardized so that they have the same meaning wherever they are used. The four categories of sign, prohibition, mandatory, safe condition, and warning are distinguished by their shape and color and use symbols, pictograms, to convey their message. Floors and traffic routes need to be well constructed and free from hazards that might cause slips, trips, and falls. The slipperiness of flooring materials can be assessed by using the coefficient of friction, COF, test, which will provide information on different COF values between one surface and another and the effects of contamination on surfaces in terms of COF. The process of cleaning floors can create slip and trip hazards. Risk should be minimized by controlling the sequence in which cleaning is undertaken, the cleaning techniques used, good housekeeping, and providing appropriate slip-resistant footwear. Safe places of work. Provision and maintenance. The provision of a safe place of work is fundamental to workplace safety. It is a basic requirement of the ILO Occupational Safety and Health Convention, C-155, to provide and maintain workplaces, equipment, devices, and systems so that they remain safe. We will now look at what this means in practice. Equipment and devices which require a system of maintenance include Emergency lighting Fencing Fixed equipment used for window cleaning Anchorage points for safety harnesses Devices to limit the opening of windows Powered doors escalators, and moving walkways. A suitable system of maintenance involves ensuring that regular maintenance is carried out at suitable intervals, including, as necessary, inspection, testing, adjustment, lubrication, and cleaning. Any potentially dangerous defects are remedied and access to defective equipment is prevented in the meantime. Regular maintenance and remedial work are carried out properly. A suitable record is kept ensuring the system is properly implemented and to assist in validating maintenance programs. Cleanliness To achieve an acceptable standard of cleanliness, the following need to be kept sufficiently clean. Workplaces Furniture, furnishings, and fittings Surfaces of floors, walls, and ceilings Waste materials should not be allowed to accumulate in a workplace except in suitable receptacles. Workstations and seating. Workstations should be arranged so that each task can be carried out safely and comfortably. Be suitable for any special needs of the individual worker, including workers with disabilities. Allow people adequate freedom of movement and the ability to stand upright. Provide sufficient clear and unobstructed space to enable the work to be done safely. Seating should provide adequate support for the lower back. Include a footrest for any worker who cannot comfortably place his or her feet flat on the floor. Windows and transparent doors. Windows or other transparent surfaces and walls, partitions, doors, or gates should be made of safety material, for example, polycarbonates, glass blocks, or protected against breakage of the transparent or translucent material appropriately marked to make them apparent. Provision of safe means of access and egress. There should be sufficient traffic routes, of sufficient width and headroom, to allow people on foot or in vehicles to circulate safely and without difficulty. Floors and traffic routes should be of sound construction. Have adequate strength and stability, considering the loads placed on them and the traffic passing over them. Not be overloaded. Have no holes, slopes, or uneven or slippery surfaces likely to cause a person to slip, trip or fall, or to drop or lose control of anything being lifted or carried. Cause instability or loss of control of vehicles and or their loads. 
be kept free of obstructions, which may present a hazard or impede access. Open sides of staircases should be securely fenced and provided with a secure and substantial handrail. Types of safety signs Prohibition signs Are round with a white background and red border and crossbar. Have symbols in black placed centrally on the background without obliterating the crossbar. Mean that something must not be done. Mandatory signs are round with a blue background and white symbol. State what must be done, or what protective equipment must be worn, as in the examples above. Safe condition, formerly emergency, signs. Are square or oblong with white symbols on a green background. Indicate such safe conditions as a first aid post or emergency evacuation route. Warning signs. Are triangular with a black border and a black pictogram on a yellow background. Warn of the presence of a particular hazard. Fire safety signs fall into two categories. Those providing information on means of escape and which take the form of a safe condition. Those identifying the location of fire equipment, for example, alarm point, fire extinguisher. A fire safety sign which bears only text such as fire exit is not acceptable, although text may be used in combination with pictograms. Fire equipment signs are square or rectangular in shape with a white pictogram on a red background. Typical areas where safety signs would be used. Signboards should be Installed in a position appropriate to the line of sight, either at the access point to the area of a general hazard or in the immediate vicinity of a specific hazard. Clearly visible in a well-lit position. Avoid placing too many signs close together and remove signs if the situation to which they refer no longer exists. Illuminated signs should be provided with emergency lighting power if power might be lost in an emergency. Pipework containing dangerous substances should be marked. It should be identified and marked at sampling and discharge points using the same symbols or pictograms as those commonly seen on containers of dangerous substances. Stores and areas containing significant quantities of dangerous substances should be identified by an appropriate warning sign, the same signs as are used for marking pipework, unless they hold very small quantities. The labels on the containers can be seen clearly from outside the store. Signs marking obstacles, dangerous locations, and traffic routes can be used where the risk is low. It is impractical to safeguard by other means. Obstacles or dangerous locations such as the edge of a loading platform or a danger zone adjacent to a process can be marked using yellow and black or red and white angled stripes. Where clearly defined traffic routes are necessary, they should be marked using continuous yellow or white lines. Standard road traffic signs and markings should be used in outdoor areas to control vehicles and pedestrians. Designing surfaces to reduce slipping. Holes, bumps, or uneven areas resulting from damage or wear and tear, which may cause a person to trip or fall, should be made good. Slopes should not be steeper than necessary. Moderate and steep slopes, and ramps used by people with disabilities, should be provided with a secure handrail where necessary. Surfaces of floors and traffic routes which are likely to get wet or be subject to spillages should be of a type which does not become unduly slippery. A slip-resistant coating should be applied where necessary. Floors near to machinery which could cause injury if anyone were to fall against it, for example, a woodworking or grinding machine, should be slip-resistant and kept free from slippery substances or loose materials. Arrangements should be made to minimize risks from snow and ice. This may involve gridding, snow clearing and closure of some routes, particularly outside stairs, ladders, and walkways on roofs. Effective drainage should be provided where a floor is liable to get wet. Slip resistance testing. Coefficient of friction, COF. Floors that are slippery could put people's safety at risk. How slippery a floor is can be determined by measuring the coefficient of friction, COF. The higher the COF, the more slip resistant the surface. 
We have already noted that surfaces of floors and traffic routes which are likely to get wet or be subject to spillages should be of a type which does not become unduly slippery. We can measure the COF of such surfaces when they are wet, this represents the wet coefficient of friction, WCOF. To prevent slips, the WCOF should be as close to the dry ideal as possible for surfaces that may become wet. The slipperiness of flooring materials can be accurately assessed by using commercially available, portable scientific test instruments. The method of slipperiness assessment preferred by the UK's health and safety executive uses a pendulum coefficient of friction, COF, test. The pendulum COF test is based on a swinging imitation heel, using a standardized rubber soling sample, which sweeps over a set area of flooring in a controlled manner. The slipperiness of the flooring has a direct and measurable effect on the pendulum test value. Definition Coefficient of friction Friction is the resistance an object encounters in moving over another. It is easier to drag an object over ice than gravel. The reason for this is that the gravel exerts more frictional resistance. The coefficient of friction is a number which represents the friction between two surfaces. Smooth surfaces have lower friction coefficients, rough surfaces have higher coefficients. The frictional force is the force needed to push an object over a given surface. So, a smooth surface will require less push or force than a rough surface. The formula that links the frictional force, F, coefficient of friction, mu, and weight, N, on normal reaction, is F equals mu N. So, for a heavy object, N, a greater force, F, is required to push it and the relationship between the two depends on the coefficient of friction, mu. Interpretation of Pendulum Results The COF results can be used to provide information on Different COF values between one surface and another Effects of contamination on surfaces in terms of COF Pendulum results should be interpreted using the information reproduced in the table below, from UK Slip Resistance Group. Using this technique on a dry or wet surface, values of 36 or more, equivalent to a COF of 0.36, are currently accepted to indicate satisfactory slip resistance. Further tests are usually carried out after contamination of the test surface with any expected contaminant which allows an insight into the actual COF experienced in everyday working situations. Methods for cleaning floors and the appropriate footwear to wear while cleaning. The process of cleaning can create slip and trip hazards, especially for those entering the area being cleaned, such as the cleaners. For example, smooth floors left damp by a mop are likely to be extremely slippery. Trailing wires from a vacuum or buffing machine can present a trip hazard. Contamination is implicated in almost all slip accidents. Regular and effective cleaning to remove contamination helps reduce accidents. For effective floor cleaning, use the right amount of the right cleaning product. Give time for detergent to work on greasy floors. Cleaning equipment will only be effective if it is well maintained. A dry mop or squeegee will reduce floor drying time, but while the floor is damp, there will be a slip risk. A well run mop will leave a thin film of water sufficient to create a slip risk on a smooth floor. Spot clean where possible. People often slip on floors that have been left wet after cleaning so pedestrian access to smooth wet floors should be prevented by using barriers, locking doors, or cleaning in sections. Signs and cones only warn of a hazard, they do not prevent people from entering the area, and if the spill is not visible, they are usually ignored. During their work cleaners may be exposed to slip risks. Control should ensure risks are minimized by careful planning of the sequence in which cleaning is undertaken and cleaning techniques used. It is also important to make sure that appropriate footwear is worn during cleaning operations. This means making sure that cleaners do not wear obviously unsuitable footwear, such as high heels, and encouraging them to choose slip-resistant footwear equipped with the correct type of sole for their work activity. Importance of good housekeeping 
obstructions and objects left lying around can easily go unnoticed and cause a trip accident. These causes are frequently overlooked, but generally easy to remedy. Potential trip hazards associated with cleaning and possible control measures to reduce the risk to cleaners. And others are Cables and leads from cleaning equipment such as scrubber dryers and vacuum cleaners. Where possible cleaning should be undertaken during quiet times or outside normal work hours to reduce the likelihood of people tripping over equipment and cables. If cleaning must be carried out when there are people in the vicinity, ensure staff and others are made aware that cleaning is in progress by using effective signs or barriers. Where the use of a cable is unavoidable. Minimize the operating length. Increase its visibility. Cover it. Move it out of the way of pedestrians. Disconnect and tidy away equipment after use. Rubbish for example, discarded boxes, waste materials, bin bags. Safely remove and dispose of any waste items that may cause a trip hazard. Avoid temporary trip hazards by not leaving unattended rubbish in walkways. Uneven floors for example, curling mats, peeling, or missing carpet tiles, holes, and changes in level. Cleaners and supervisors should report any flooring defects or unmarked changes in level to the occupier. Occupiers should put systems in place, which make it easy for cleaners to report defects. Lighting, poor lighting, can increase the risk of trips, as obstacles may not be clearly visible. Cleaners and supervisors should tell occupiers about areas where the light is poor, or bulbs are missing or blown. Housekeeping, inform occupiers about housekeeping issues, such as Workers leaving clutter around workstations, which create trip hazards for cleaning staff. Spillages, from leaking machinery, vending machines, and leaking roof lights. Cleaning equipment left unattended and not safely stored. Please like, share, and subscribe for more safety knowledge.